How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. I was planning on a step-by-step -step guide on how to work Conquest playing Ming. Halfway through my last Ming game, I realized that Ming really doesn't need a play-by-play -play rulebook. Ming starts in isolation as the biggest nation in the world, number one great power, and you are going to remain there for the rest of the game, even if you don't play super aggressive. Ottomans might be the best nation to do War Conquest, but I think Ming is actually the easiest one for beginners. You can play Ming very casually and still manage to own more than half of the world between you and your tributaries. So this guide is going to be fairly short. I will give a few pointers on where to expand and which ideas to take and some Ming specific game mechanics. In my last playthrough, I was purposely playing very passive and I still managed to take all of Asia, Indonesia, East Europe, Arabia, and Africa. The only nations that were not my tributary were France, Austria, and the Great Britain. So if you try a little hard and pay close attention, you can do a world conquest fairly easily. Let's start with the opening moves for Ming. Get level 2 advisors from the start. You can afford it. Preferably unrest guy for admin, improve relations or diplo rep guy for diplo, and morale or discipline for military. Set Ashikaga as rival. Start harmonizing Tarwada. Make your ruler as a general, and get another general from a state. Start establishing tributaries to whoever would accept, except your neighbors to the north. That's the way we are going to start our conquests. Set naval doctrine to shipboarding. Move your armies to the north border. Set your trade ships to protect trade. Get the decree for infant combat ability. Set all tributaries to give you admin. For the ones who can't give you any monarch points, get manpower for starting few years. Next, start fabricating on Haishi and declare on either Korchin or Haishi as soon as possible. This concludes about the first month of your playthrough. Next, we will look at some of the basic guidelines while playing Ming. Always keep your diplomats busy. Either improve relations with prospective tributaries or current tributaries. Once I get the extra diplomat from Celestial Reforms, I put one on automatic to improve relations with subjects. Never use missionaries. Just forget this button even exists. Always keep harmonizing. You should almost always take plus harmonizing progress with events. Don't worry too much about low harmony right now. Yes, it affects meritocracy, but in about 100 years or so, your meritocracy will remain high enough. When fighting rebels early game, remember, you will be attacking in mountains, as most of your country is mountainous. That means you will suffer a lot of losses. Make sure you bring enough units or just wait till the rebels start sieging your fort. As Ming, if you border a non-tributary nation, you lose mandate. Once you start getting close to the big nations such as Ottomans and Russia or Muscovy, you should plan ahead on what provinces you conquer, so you can either release a vassal or vassalize an existing nation. Ideally, this vassal will have cores in the big nations so you don't have to wait for claims and just use the reconquest CV. Late game, you can use client states to form vassal shields, which is a bit more convenient. Switch the tributary demands depending on which idea group you're working on. Keep it on admin for all other times. You will have to use monarch points to develop institutions in your capital area. Use mercenaries from the start. You will be able to afford it. Be careful about offering tributary status to nations in the new world after 1650 as colonizers will attack them and you will get dragged in. You can decline the call to arms, but it costs 10 mandate, 25 prestige, 1 diplorap, and plus 50 liberty desire with that tributary. We'll discuss this a bit more later. When declaring war on someone who is allied to your tributaries, your tributaries will have crosses indicating that they won't join the war. However, if the reason's value is positive, they will honor the alliance. So don't get fooled by the crosses next to enemy allies. And finally, check your mandate after every war or after you deploy annex a nation. If you're losing too much mandate to non-tributaries, either get more tributaries or make a vassal shield. Next, let's take a look at the idea groups. I always start with administrative to get the core in cost reduction, as you will be expanding fairly constantly in the early years. The mercenary cost discount is a good bonus too. Next is exploration. This is important if you time it right. If you discover America before 1500, there's a chance you can spawn colonialism, which is great. Next is humanist. Rebels are always an annoyance. Rebels are even more annoying when they spawn in mountains, and they are even worse when it takes your army over six months to move from your western border to your eastern border. Humanist is a must when playing Ming. Next, I take influence for diplo annex, time reduction, and AE reduction. After this, I like going for military techs. By this time, you will start fighting the European powers, and you will find that you might have the numbers, but your army quality is lacking. I usually go quality, 
then offensive, then defensive, but you can switch it around. Last group I usually take is Diplo for faster Diplo annexing and the reduced province war cost modifier. If you plan on playing more as a colonizer, you can substitute the first military group with expansion. That will give you an extra colonist and also some trade bonuses. Let's take a brief look at conquest when playing Ming. Your first goal is to conquer the three tribes to your north. You might want to release a vassal here for faster conquests. Then you will turn west and take on Oirat and Chagatai. Continue with whoever is alive next in the west, Uzbek, Nogai, Sever, Kazakh, eventually getting to Muscovy or Russia. Your aim should be to seal off the Russian Siberian frontier so Russia can't expand into Siberia. Use vassal shields against Russia or Muscovy. Also, vassalize or release Circassia as subject. Their provinces have high coring cost and will form a good wall against the Ottomans. If Timurids exist, make a vassal shield just for a war or two. They won't be a problem for long. If Timurids don't exist, keep rampaging down till you reach the southern Caspian Sea area. Once you reach the northern Persia, vassalize or release Khorasan and make them march. They have very good military national ideas and they will help you a lot in conquest. And you can also use them as a vassal shield against the Ottomans. Make as many tributaries in the Indian subcontinent as you can. After a while, one of the nations will be big enough that they will become disloyal and eventually break tributary status. If they don't break themselves, just do it yourself and get a claim and go to war when truce expires. This will give you an in within the subcontinent and you can conquer whoever is disloyal or refuses to be a tributary from there. Once you have eaten up Russia, move on to East Europe. Remember to get a vassal shield against larger nations. If Commonwealth is alive, you can ally them as they will help you against Ottomans and the HRE, in which case you can approach Europe from Scandinavia. If Commonwealth isn't a force, you should ally Austria or whoever is the biggest nation in that region. Against Ottomans, call in your European ally. They will rival Ottomans and will help you against them. Ottomans are going to require a few wars to cut them down to size. You will have to keep a vassal shield for most of the wars with them. To go into Arabia and Africa, either you can hop onto the Hormuz area as soon as you can and make your way to Africa from there. If you don't want to play very aggressive, you can grant tributary status to all Arabian nations and wait till you have neutralized Ottomans and then go to Africa directly. Sometimes you will be called to protect your tributaries. AI likes to attack your tributaries when you are busy with another war. It's actually not a big deal if you decline. Yes, you take a hit on Mandate, Prestige and Diplorep, but as long as you have the Mandate higher than 50, you will be okay. If you do decide to go into war, make sure you can win it. Indonesia and Japan won't take much time. Eat up whoever isn't a tributary in Indonesia, and if you can take over Japan anytime mid to late game, there won't be a problem. Only thing you have to make sure is that you have enough navy to support your invasions here. You can also conquer your tributaries if you are going for a one-tag world conquest. You can revoke tributary status and wait for the truce to expire before attacking them. Remember, your tributaries don't accrue aggressive expansion from your conquests. You should aim to get maximum absolutism using court and country disaster when the age of absolutism starts. It will help you massively late game and make expansion easier. I won't go into details on how to fire the court and country disaster in this video, but you can check out my other video on that. You can use one of the nations in the East Siberia for the no CB war, and remember, you will get a lot of 50 to 60k rebel stacks so be prepared. I think Ming makes for a really easy beginner nation. You have the army size, the economy, and no real enemies till mid game. On top of that, you have your tributaries who will give you loads of monarch points, manpower, or ducats. Not to mention the extra coring cost reductions you get from decree and celestial reforms. The only thing you have to watch out for is your mandate. As long as you can consistently keep it over 50, you will be unmatched and conquer the world. I hope this guide helps new players who are trying their hand at Ming. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.